The day came for Mekamaru's investigatory mission to Mount Hiei. The skies were gray and drizzling, and while he couldn't sense the atmospheric temperature dropping with the rain, he could feel his metal finger stiffening. It was inconvenient, but at least it was a new experience. The mission was set to begin in the afternoon. Mekamaru waited near the vending machines at Jujutsu High for the car that would take him to the mountain. This body couldn't drink soda or coffee, but he enjoyed seeing students using their break time to have a beverage. He wanted to be like them. Oh, here you are, Mekamaru, a voice called out. Miwa, what do you need? Mekamaru lifted his head and saw Mai and Nishimiya as well. They were a tight-knit trio at the Kyoto campus, and he often saw them together, even though they weren't all in the same grade. But why were they approaching him now? He recalled how once Mai and Nishimiya had gotten carried away and convinced Miwa to give him a double-A battery for Valentine's Day. They had told her that he had a taste-free Volta brand batteries. This had bothered him, and he had wondered if they had eaten something that had made them act that way. Even aside from such hijinks, these three were like the incarnation of mischief. People from other prefectures said Kyoto women were frightening, and even though Kokichi didn't know much about the world, he could understand what they meant. Mekamaru, hold out your hand, Nishimiya said. She was a senior student, so it was difficult to refuse. Mekamaru wasn't certain which hand to offer, but he eventually held out his right hand. Miwa pulled something from her pocket, thrust it toward his wrist joint, where it wouldn't interfere with his armament, and affixed it there. What, what is, is this? this? Mekamaru's face couldn't change expressions, but in his room, Kokichi's eyes widened. It was a cheap scrunchie. That in itself wasn't surprising, but there was a keychain swinging from it. Was it the style of a character design called SD for Super Deformed? The keychain was a capsule toy of a small character, a type whose head and body are the same size. The soft plastic had been painted to look like metal armor. It looked like a robot. Mai snickered at the sight of a robot decorating a robot. The three of us went shopping yesterday, she said. We went to the sixth floor of Avanti, where we don't get to go very often. Avanti? What, what is that? that? Mekamaru asked, cocking his head. Since he rarely went out, he didn't know of it. Nishimiya answered. It's on Hachijo Street, near Kyoto Station. Mai said she wanted to play the pistol shooting game at an arcade there. I never said that. It was surprisingly fun. I've never seen a place outside of Akihabara with so many capsule toys, Miwa said. But they're more expensive than you think. Nishimiya said. You can't get too into them. I got obsessed with these ugly but cute cat keychains and ended up blowing a bunch of money. I realized Momo is the type that should never play pachinko, Mai said. Don't make me sound so seedy, Mai! Nishimiya chided with a pout. Mai stifled a laugh. Kokichi thought about how nice it was to have peers. Anyway, we stumbled across these capsule toys. We were surprised to see they had Mekamaru once, Nishimiya said. Yes, I'm surprised too, Mekamaru replied. Of course, the keychain didn't look like the ultimate Mekamaru. It portrayed a more heroic robot from a well-known anime. In fact, it was the iconic robot in the anime that Kokichi, who operated Mekamaru, had once admired and been so crazy about. It was the source of his highest aspirations. Mai said we definitely had to use it to decorate you, Miwa said, at which Mai covered her mouth and laughed. It's all right, isn't it? Mai asked. In English, she said, Mekamaru on Mekamaru. It suits you. <laughs> it's not that funny, Mai, Miwa said. Besides, is on even the right English preposition there? Mekamaru raised his right arm and looked at the robot character dangling on its chain. At that moment, the wind changed and the clouds parted. The sudden brightening of the sun made Kokichi squint. It's time, Mekamaru, assistant manager Tanabe called from the other side of the hall, caressing his arm as if it were precious. Mekamaru lowered his sleeve, covering his new ornament. See you later! Mekamaru had already turned his back, so he couldn't see the speaker's expression. However, the tone of voice and the emotion it carried resounded through him. Thank you. I'll be back, Kokichi said. As he spoke, he realized that his words sounded like a promise to return to his schoolmates. All right, y'all. That is section six of chapter two. I would like you to raise your hand if that was difficult. Me. I'm raising my hand. Um, If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Actually, if you don't, you're about to. If you're an anime only, you're about to know. You will find out what I am throwing a fit about in this season. Um. Anyway, I also wholeheartedly enjoy every second I get with this trio. Miwa, Mai, and Momo are my favorite. And I never thought that I would say that based on the manga or the anime. But seeing these three interact on a page in a novel is is just a treat. I utterly adore them. And we're going to get more of them later in Mai's chapter two. Because the trio gets into some shit. Um, also want to shout out to Mai for uh, making English Mekamaru jokes. And want to shout out to Miwa even more for calling her out for misusing prepositions. That's my girl. That is my girl. Very proud of her. Anyway, next section we get into some action. So uh, look forward to that.
I will see y'all there.